I'm Miranda Butler. I'm a PhD student at UC Riverside. I'm here to talk to you about three excellent numbers, numbers five, six, and seven. And I want you guys to think about one particular theme that ties these together. And that's the idea of a thwarted marriage proposal. In chapter 16, we get Arthur's hilarious denial about not wanting to be in love with Pet. He's not going to allow himself to feel these feelings. He has resolved to not feel these feelings. And so in a sense, this is thwarting a marriage proposal. He's not going to allow himself to fall for her. But yet, when we go from nobody's weakness, i.e. Arthur Clennam telling himself he's not going to give in to that weakness, to the next chapter, nobody's rival, the nobody clearly becomes just a stand-in for Clennam himself. So Clennam sees this other possible suitor, Gowan, and immediately says, oh, it's so good I've resolved not to fall in love with Pet, otherwise I'd be so jealous, and learns that actually there is also a thwarted marriage proposal between Gowan and Pet herself. Pet's family is not excited by the prospects of Gowan, who doesn't actually seem to be good at anything, and they keep sending Pet on these trips to separate the two so Gowan can propose. It's interesting with Pet, though, because it's the choice of others that thwart the proposal. For Clenum, he decides on his own that he won't propose to her or be in love with her. And then for Gowan, it's the family who decides that they're going to stop this from happening. After that, in chapter 18, we meet young John. The most emo guy who fantasizes about his gravestone. He follows Little Dorrit to her favorite place, the Iron Bridge, and he wants to propose marriage to her there, but she won't allow it. We could view this as her possibly being a martyr, but later we're going to get into the same question from Arthur Clennam that we have right here. Does Little Dorrit love young John and want to marry him? Or totally not. I think that although we really want her to be happy, this is not the way. So after that, we get into number six, beginning with chapter 19. This is where Little Dorrit's dad starts telling this story about a previous sister of someone. And basically the story that Little Dorrit's dad tells her is that it is necessary and preferable to lead on a man who you don't love and do who knows what romantic things with that person so that your father or brother or whatever man you're supporting can get the things that he so desperately needs and that you're being so selfish by not allowing him to have. This is so upsetting that little Dorrit, who is so shy and quiet and meek, stops her father from going on by physically covering up his mouth. This is an amazing scene. Now we go to chapter 20, where we get our third, or fourth if we're counting two for pet, thwarted marriage proposal. Let's talk about Mrs. Myrtle, the son of Mrs. Myrtle, wanted to marry Fanny. Fanny is far below his station. Fanny doesn't want to marry this guy anyway, but the mother is really concerned that the son will marry her. So the mother is trying to bribe Fanny by giving her this bracelet. Um, the two sisters have a fight over this that's very intense and breaks little Dorrit's heart because yet again she's being told that she's selfish and needs to be giving up things that she wants so that other people can have what they deserve. And why does she never think of anybody else? So... In the seventh installment, we get three chapters, 23, 24, and 25, and although there may not seem to be a thwarted marriage plot, there kind of is. And that's the old flame between Flora and Arthur Clennam. Now, years ago, there was some romance between them, but it fizzled out, never came to anything, and yet continues to live on in Flora's heart. So Flora, hearing about Little Dorrit decides to hire her to do some needlework. And when she does, we get a hilarious contrast of these two women when uh, Little Dorrit comes to do the work and Flora is just chatting her ear off about all of this old stuff with Arthur Clennam. So to leave you off today, I want you to wonder and think and discuss what other romances are always being subverted and thwarted and stopped from happening. Who is stopping them? Is it the woman? Is it the man? Is it someone outside of the relationship who's stopping whatever thing from taking place? 
So these are some great chapters, and there's many more to come. I hope you enjoy them, and have fun reading on. <laughs>